Hello, my name is Kalle. Nice to hear you, Francis. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you very much. No problem. I'm yeah. sorry about yesterday. I was supposed to speak to you yesterday, was I? No, it was in Berlin on Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry about you. We had a few bits and pieces go and we didn't get to Berlin until far too late. We had some shit go on. So there you go. So I'm, I apologize. Oh, no problem. Thank you for the time right now. It's no problem. Amazing for me. It's I'm really fucking nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Francis, um, how was the show in Berlin? It was a great show for me to see you on stage again for the second time. How was it for you? Um, pretty good, I think. I mean, I enjoy it most nights. I'm, I'm trying to think. It was a bit boomy. The sound wasn't perfect, but being in a band, you're always trying to, you're always trying to get the ultimate pleasure from it. So I think it's the perfect sound, the perfect audience, the perfect everything. And most nights are perfect, but you're always looking for the ultimate so each night you go out there and uh, I try not to look forward to it anymore. I just go and do it. I mean, last night was something I really didn't want to do. <laughs> and I really enjoyed myself. So I think when you set the expectations too high, uh -huh. so I don't have any expectations on a show, I always think it's going to go wrong. Okay. And usually it's like, oh, that was okay, you know. Okay. Um, you travel around uh, as you've been 16 years old. Um, do you remember your first concert you ever played? Yes, it was out in Lancaster and John Coughlin, and we played in somewhere in South London in October 1962. Um, we played about 20 minutes, and I wouldn't go on or I wouldn't go to start until Alan Lancaster's mother arrived. Uh huh. Oh, long time ago. <laughs> well, for you, well, for me as well, I suppose, yes. Probably before you were born, which is not very good for me to hear. <laughs> I'm 25 right now, so... 25, oh, lovely. Uh, have I got children of your age? Yes, I have a daughter of your age. Yeah, you've got eight kids. That's... Eight children, yes. The youngest is 16 and the eldest is about 40-something shit. But it's really difficult to see them and you're on tour already, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Francis, um, you bring out 28 albums, or more than 28, or over 100 singles, but you didn't reach the USA. Could, uh, you, could you think why? We had two singles reach the USA, Domestic Men and Ice in the Sun, and then we started touring in the early 70s, just after we had success in England and Europe, and we were starting to make good money. Mm. And we were spending so much money in America chasing the Yankee dollar. And at the time, we never thought that this would last this long, nor did anybody. So the fear of earning this money and then spending it and then being finished and uh, having no money left, you know that this, your parents' teaching kicks in. So we, we decided that we wouldn't go there anymore and wouldn't spend all the money getting there. Plus, at the time, we needed to give half our management away, which we didn't. And that was kind of a trick from our own management who didn't want to share. And it was such a corrupt situation that you have to do certain things to, which we didn't find out until later. So I dare say we could have had a modicum of success uh, and been to a point now where we could go there for a while, but we can probably do 2,000 tickets, but we can't afford to be there and carry the production. So mm. we end up not going there. And it would have been nice because my mother-in-law would then know I am, but otherwise... I'm quite happy with my life. Mind you, I'm lying. It's a joke. Never mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, what job uh, would you do if you're not a musician? Do you think about it? I would work in my family's uh, ice cream or confectionery or a retail of some sort, probably. Oh, okay. I wouldn't be able to work for somebody else. I've worked oh. too long for myself. And I started working for myself. My father was self-employed. And, and um, someone's just thrown me here. Uh, That's what I would like to do, something on my own, I suppose. Okay, cool. 
I read in another interview that you collect a lot of CDs. Um, you're a lot of what? CDs. Uh, so, uh, I mean, vinyls or CDs, covers and everything else. So okay. you, you didn't download any uh, songs. That's really cool. Um, do, you, do you buy CDs because of the booklet or is it um, the special feeling behind I mean, um, is it a special feeling to buy a CD, or is it... Um... Oh, I don't download, you mean? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I I downloaded one track by the Sugar Bass ones, and the way the system works these days, you know, you have to keep identifying the track as being yours and then transferring it to a different uh, laptop and so on. And I find that I'm of a generation, if I really like the track... Yeah. Or the record, I have to have the record, and it's, I think it's just because I'm older, and perhaps a younger generation would eventually realize that everything they're purchasing they don't own, and I come from a generation where uh, you worked hard for a living, and you bought things, and you owned them, and that's, that's ingrained in people of my age, that I want to own the, the product, mm -hmm. whereas yeah. if I doubt, I don't own anything, and I don't like that. But in the rock and metal scene, the, the people are really great in collecting CDs, vinyls. So, um, I don't know. I was in, where was I the other day? In Cologne. Mm -hmm. I was in some store looking for a DVD, a movie to watch. And I was quite impressed with the amount of vinyl in, in, in this. But that's kind of ridiculous. It's, uh, I'm saying that to you. That means it's extremely rare. When I was younger, everything was vinyl. People bought vinyl. Whereas now we make a point of saying, "Whoa, you've got a lot of vinyl." That means there isn't much vinyl out there, and it's kind of specialist and um, for minority, you know, which is a bit sad. But mm -hmm. um, do you have time on tour or something uh, when you have day off or something? Do you go to concerts and watch uh, other bands? I never go to concerts. No. Okay, and do you help some newcomer bands to come out and to bring their stuff out with a special image or professional? Do you help them or do you say, do it alone? Sometimes I help, sometimes I do it, do it alone. People ask me what my advice I would give their, their younger people and I always tell the younger people to stop and forget rock business, rock business. And if they have the tenacity to carry on, they will ignore me. Mm -hmm. If they don't have the ten tenacity to carry on, they will listen to my wise words. When I was younger, we have a generation of people now that sort of seem to encourage younger people all the time, especially, go, oh, you're so good, you're so good. Uh, what made a mass fight was that everybody said, you've got no chance, and, and everybody was said, with status quo, wouldn't make it. And, my, and lots of my parents were okay, but lots of my relatives said, well, no, mm -hmm. it won't do it. And that made me fight and makes us fight. So when I tell a young person, So it's harder from the, for the bands to come out right now in this business? It's very difficult, very, because everybody can make a CD, everybody can make records, everybody can distribute. And music isn't quite as special as it used to be because you go in every single store and you can hear acts. You can go anywhere you go, there's music in on the phone, in the elevator, in the stores, in the malls. Mm. Everywhere has music. And there are so many radio stations that specialize in different kinds of music and each radio station wants to have its own identity. In the 60s and the 70s and maybe even the 80s, the radio stations were glad to be part of the music business and now they want to kind of dictate the music business. So 
it's gotten a little bit strange. It's different, that's all. Mm. The live market is a lot bigger than it used to be. But there's a lot of acts in the live market that are playing live. They're working with laptops. But maybe that's the future. And many, many bands try to do it with playback. I hear from some bands like WASP or uh, Alice Cooper. They go on stage and do playback. And that's uh, not great for a live show. And I know that you didn't do playback. No, we haven't done that, no. But as I said to you, though, that Alice Cooper and uh, Wasp, they may be thinking if you can't beat them, join them, because lots of young acts, I'd say 70 or 80 percent of young acts, boy bands, girl bands, are using uh, what you call playback. It's on a laptop now, so it's perfect. And... You know, when a live band goes on after a band has been played, there's something that sounds very rough. So I think uh, Alice Cooper, if he does what you say, is just, um, it's, I can't beat them, so I will join them. Mm, okay. Makes it a level, an even playing field again. Whereas at the moment, someone that plays before you that has that beautiful sound from a laptop, it's very difficult to compete with that. Yeah. Um, how would you describe your show, your own show? I mean, if you stand in your crowd and see your own show on stage, how would you describe it to fans who, uh, who didn't uh, see you before? Rubbish. Rubbish? Mm. <laughs> I don't like looking at me. I don't think it looks very good. So I, don't, I try not to look at that, and I'm just happy that I'm, some people like it. Uh -huh. But for me, I, uh, I wouldn't be in the audience. I wouldn't like looking at him. I don't. Okay. It's very strange. So I would just say, yeah. <laughs> okay, so and then how important is a live, uh, light show for you in a, on stage? Lights. Mm -hmm. I don't pay much attention to lights. We've had a lighting designer for okay. probably about 21 years and he's very, very good. In fact, the first or two or three shows on this tour, I noticed the lights. I said, it must be quite good because I noticed um, Pink Floyd is all about lights. Yeah. Status Quo is all about the energy and watching the band so we always say that the audience go, don't go home singing the lights yeah and sometimes it's really important to bring the, the right feeling for the song with lights yes agreed but that's not my department I don't I don't find that of any interest to me I'm sure I would if I saw it from the front but I can't see from the front and I've never seen from the front so mm. I don't pretend to know what it looks like I leave that to the lighting designer okay For a photograph, you bring good light. I mean, um, they're standing yeah, yeah, yeah. in the first row. Everything is white. It's perfect. Um, Francis, my last question for you is a little um, yeah, thing I want to know. Is your all-time favorite band? I mean, you can pick six members from every rock and metal band you like and put them together in one band. Uh, which person you would choose? I wouldn't. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. It's just I don't have that all. Oh, he would be great in a band. That's very much like... Um Mm -hmm. what's the favorite girl I would like to see in a porno movie it's just I don't it's very strange for me to do that my, my favorite person I suppose in, in rock and roll is, is Jeff Lynn mm -hmm. um, so it'd be Jeff Lynn on guitar Jeff Lynn on drums Jeff Lynn <laughs> the Jeff Lynn cover band yeah, Jeff, yeah, exactly. solo band. Jeff Lynn to me is um, I've known Jeff Lynn since I was about 15 or 16 mm -hmm. and I'm about to spend, uh, send him a message in, in this morning from about some stuff he did for us so and I like his new album and I'm a little bit um, fanatical about him I suppose so he's the only person in the business that I actually could get a little bit wow anything he does I like having said that I do like Muse a lot but I never would think about all oh, that man in that man that man and that I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I wouldn't know how to make up a band and That's very much from a fan's point of view. I see something, I like it, or I don't like it. I wouldn't want to put a band together. Okay. Then, Francis, thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Hope to meet you sometime um, personally. Lovely. Will be great. Take care. And, um, yeah, enjoy the tour, the rest of the tour. Thank you very much. And, um, yeah, that's Bye it now. for me. Thank you very much. Bye.